Welcome back guys, Frosty Gaming here to give you another Unity tutorial. Today I'm going to talk about something that I see a lot of people having trouble with when they first start using Unity. Moving around the scene and moving your objects around in the scene. A lot of people have trouble kind of like maneuvering through 3D space. The controls are a little unintuitive I guess. So I'm going to talk about that and tell you how you can get things done fairly easy. Alright, so we've got our scene here, right? When you left click to like drag yourself across the screen, right? It just drags this box, maybe lets you select things. It's not gonna actually do anything for you. But if you right click, oh, you can you can look around, right? If you hold the right mouse button, this is the fly through mode. So this is the right mouse button. If you click and hold it, it'll let you <clears throat> look around, right? But you're not actually moving, you're just looking around. So this isn't actually that helpful. But if you keep holding the right mouse button, you can use the W A S D keys to kind of move around a little bit. Now this isn't a really great way to do it, but it's something you can do. You can also use Q and E to go down and up. Alright. So that's one way to get around. Another way to get around is the arrow keys, which are going to do the same thing as the WASD. Also not really what you might want. You can get really fast with it though. Alright. Anyway, so the arrow keys, the WASD keys. The arrow keys, however, only move you on the X and Z plane. They don't move you up and down. If you hold ALT and you left click and drag, you can see that you kind of move around a pivot. And this is what you're probably going to be using most of the time to move yourself around the scene, is this ALT left click. You can also do ALT middle click and you can move yourself around like this. Now this just kind of drags your camera around, it doesn't like pivot around anything if you want to see the other side of it, but it'll help you move around still. If you hold alt and right click and hold, then you can zoom. And this is going to be the same kind of thing as the middle scroll wheel on your mouse if you have that. Just not uh, as accurate as this. Now if you look up here, you might have realized that these are changing as I'm like holding down ALT or holding down uh, right mouse button, something like that. And that's just to signify that you're in that mode. Well these modes are really interesting and I've pretty much shown you all of them. But this is for pretty much moving yourself around the scene, right? These three are for moving objects around the scene. Now to give you an idea the camera is kind of hard to show you so I'm actually just going to put in a cube so we've got our cube here in the scene and that's that's kind of small so if we go up here and click this or if we use R on the keyboard it'll shortcut to this this is the scale tool so we can scale it up from the middle and make it bigger we can scale it from these handles that's what these are called the object manipulators are handles so if we want to scale it on the Y we can do this scale it on the Z and you can see what axis they are because they'll show up in the scene gizmo here so Z axis Y axis X axis so and then scale in the middle and it'll make it a lot bigger alright so that's good and if we wanted to go back to move ourselves Q shortcut on the board on the keyboard gives us that so the shortcuts are Q, W, E, R, just for future reference. Now we don't really want it standing up, we want to rotate it, right? So we use the rotate tool, or E on the keyboard. And we can rotate it along the X, rotate it along the Z, or rotate it on the Y. 
I think that that's pretty good. All right, but we're really close to this camera, right? The camera is just seeing this big black box. So we don't want it right there. So we're going to move over to the translate tool. Well, the translate tool has these handles with arrows on it. And one of the biggest mistakes I see people make is they'll be like, oh, well, I want it away from the camera. So I'll just click and drag it here, right, from the middle. Most of the time, you don't want to click the middle, right? Because who knows where it's going in space because you can't see all of the 3D space. You only see one view of it. So if we look over here, I did a pretty good job actually of keeping that centered, but most of the time it's harder to see. I think it's because it's on the grid and you can kind of see where you're putting it, but if it's like up in space, right, and you're like, oh, I want to put it to the left or to the right or something, it might be harder to see. Right, right now I'm like way underneath this grid because I grabbed it from the center. You don't want to do that. Now let's see if I can get it back to the, where the camera was. <laughs> so you want to use these handles to move along the X, Y, and Z axis. To try to get it lined up again. Alright. So now we've got it. So again, don't use the center, use the handles. And this goes for the translate tool mostly. The rotate tool doesn't really have anything in the middle, this just means that you can manipulate it on all axes, which axes, axes, I guess, uh, which is not a big deal, you can usually tell what re orientation you want, but I normally just use these to get it just right. And with the scale tool, I mean obviously you use the center if you want it to just expand but keep the proportions. Something important to note is that the very center of this right here, this right here, is the object's pivot point. So when you rotate around it, it's going to rotate around that pivot. It's going to stay right on that. Real quick, I want to talk about this pivot and global up here, because when moving around objects, this could get really important. This pivot the pivot, like I said, is the very center of your cube, and the center is the center of your cube. Hmm. That's weird, right? It doesn't shouldn't make a difference, right? But you can change where this pivot is, and have it rotate around. Say, like, hey, if I had the pivot on the camera, it would rotate around the camera, or move in relation to the camera. If I had this on pivot, versus the center, which is the very center of the object. Uh, global versus local so you can see that changes the best way to explain this is global orientation right when we look up here at this gizmo this is the scene orientation so we've got the Z the X and the Y axis exactly the same as this that's because this is moving it on the global but this objects X Y and Z is not there right now it's local X Y and Z it's been rotated it's sideways so if we go local, you can kind of see how it's been rotated. So its Y is pointing down, its X is pointing slightly up, and the Z is pointing to the side and slightly down. So if we wanted to move it along like a face of the object, we would use this. But if we wanted to move it globally, we would use this. And the same thing goes for this rotate tool. So right now, globally, we've got it. Rot we've got rotations on the X, the Z, and the Y. But if we go global, it's going to change to rotate along its own X, Y, Z. And again, if I change the center of the pivot right now, it's not going to do anything because the pivot is in the center of the object. But later on, you might change where the pivot is for some reason, and you might want to change that. For the most part, I don't really mess with this stuff. You might change local and global to get it to move exactly where you want it to move, but for the most part, I really don't mess with it. So now that you know that, we can start getting into the development, putting things into our scene, and making it look like an actual game for once. Alright, see you next time. Thanks for watching.